We probably surveyed every beach on both coasts of Korea between us and Team 3. Now you were, you were Navy? Yeah, an underwater demolition what, team. Underwater demolition team, Navy what? Navy spec, spec war. What year did you go into the Navy? I went in at 50. 1950. At the start of the Korean War, and I got out in 53 when it was over. Where did you go for training? Oh, for well, let's see, I went in in July, and I got out of boot camp. They cut it way short. I got out of boot camp in early September, I think, best I remember. And uh, <clears throat> they sent me to an engineman school, and I hated it. Oh. I don't like working on old greasy stuff. And uh, me and my, my little buddy, I was sitting out on the barrack steps over at that engine my school, been there a few days. And uh -huh. Here come a little sailor walking by. He stopped and he said, we could be honest if I roll one of them. Yeah, I gave him the tobacco and we, we were just like that the rest of the day. He was in that school too. Oh. And we requested a transfer out. And no, that old chief said, to, that, that ain't the way the Navy works. You go where they send you and they stay there yeah. until they send you somewhere else. But mm -hmm. within two or three days, there was a, the executive officer of Underwater Demolition Team 1 come over there and they're looking for volunteers. Wow. And they called me and him and two other guys out of that class and talked to us. And we asked him if, uh, if we volunteer, when will we have orders? He said, I'll be back to get you tomorrow. <laughs> wow, wow. And he come and got us out and I started my training in September. And where did you do that training, the in underwater Coronado, demolition? In California, oh, where, Coronado. The, where the big seal training unit is now. Right, in that, right down the beach from the Hotel Del Coronado right next there? next to the Hotel Del Coronado. And when did you actually arrive then in South Korea? Uh, Roughly. I don't remember. I, I remember we had Thanksgiving. As soon as we got over there to Tokyo, and we went from there to Camp McGill. It's an, it's an old army base. There was Marines and CBs and cavalry and us. The, the demolition team stayed there. In Tokyo. And I went over there and I wasn't there probably a week and a half. 18 years old and I was gone to Korea. Wow. And what kind of missions did you have? You, you said you did missions on the west we, and the east coast. We had all different kinds. Mostly what we did, like I said a while ago, was recon, surveying the beaches in case they wanted to land or extract different people. Wow. And we made charts and sent to wherever they wanted them to go. And I think part of what we did was a, a diversion and uh, we were told it was success would make North Korea and China take troop off of some place and put where they thought we might be going to land. Oh, so by sending you guys in, maybe you would be spotted, and then North Korea and China would think, oh, this is maybe where yeah, the we, Americans well, are going to land. We wouldn't be spotted, but they're going to they're going to know from people. <laughs> Villagers not will military and, uh, yeah. Villagers will pass information. The only to two them. men we had two men killed over there, and they was ambushed in South Korea. They was at, they were ambushed yeah. after they'd gotten on the beach. So these these two um, underwater demolition guys, they were on the beach and they were ambushed on the, the beach. The two that killed were on the beach. There was two officers and two enlisted men on the beach and they was doing a rubber boat survey because it was probably about zero degrees Wow. and windy and the people, there's a little village not far from where they were and somebody say out of that village walked up there and they come out from the clothes with guns and went shooting and they killed one officer on the beach and they killed another with man they was just pulling him up over the gunnel of the boat when he got hit. Oh. Did you see that? I was about four miles away on another beach, and we got a call. They was under attack to go down there and help pull them people out of that water. You don't stay in that rubber boat if they're shooting at you. You get out of there, and, and uh, we, we took off down there, and before we got to them quite, we got close enough, we took two rounds in the boat. 
before we got down there to them, they had them all out of the water, headed back to the ship. Now, were these villagers who were shooting at you, or were well, they North we, Korean we don't soldiers? Know. Were they they oh. weren't military. They wasn't in uniform. But this was in South Korea where this happened. Yes. Wow. In friendly territory. <laughs> did you also do missions up in North Korea? Yes, we did. We did uh, the most notable mission. We did a survey of a beach in Manchuria, less than five miles from the Russian border. Wow. What did you do on that mission? Recon. To make a chart on the beach, big beach there. Now, how would a mission go? Would a, a boat or a sub well, take you to a certain... Well, we left the ship and uh, we had our own boats. Okay. You could haul about uh, about 25 or 30. <sighs> and we'd say if it was rubber boat, we had the rubber boats on there and it's a seven-man crew for each one of them. But we, uh, <clears throat> the ship don't get within artillery range. So you're on, these, sure. you're on these boats, these boats so have get, motors? We get in our speed, or motor boat, yeah. and go to a certain distance, and then we get out of there, and uh, if it's a swim, we go in for about, uh, about where they expect 18 feet of water to be, and then we do a survey from that on in. So Swimming, the, and uh, this was a rubber boat, middle of the night, no. So you go from a ship to a boat and then sometimes into the water? Yeah, we did a lot of swims. A, a real dangerous place, we'd rather do a swim than a rubber boat. Because you're really exposed in a rubber boat. To swim, you just, that much is all they can see. Now, how were you able to, did you have to go out when the moon was out so you could actually see? Because I don't think no, they had didn't, infrared we back then. We wanted the darkest, meanest weather. If it was in a, a bad place, yeah, we wanted a dark, dark of the moon. How were you able to then to keep track of each other in the dark? Well, we had a <clears throat> a little radar screen on the boats, and each one of us carried a pencil flashlight. I see. And you always had a swimming partner with you. My, I had the same swimming partner the whole time I was in there. Okay, so you never by yourself. And then when yeah. we would get into the beach, we'd turn that little flashlight back to, toward the sea and turn it on. And they'd know where we was at then. Because wow. that, that, that the motor launch stays right there. They don't go back. See, if they stay right there, patrol up and down to pick you up when you get through. Did you have a radio with you in the water? A who? A radio? I uh, know, just in the boat. Okay. They was working on... Uh, uh, underwater telephone, underwater telephones and stuff, but we we didn't have it. We didn't you know, have we, that at the We time. carried a, we had a little slate, about that long and about that wide, and a pencil would ride on it, and we took soundings about every 25 yards, in and move over and take them coming back out, and you write on that chart, and then you you turn that slate on to the draftsman when you get back to the ship. And he makes the charts? He makes, he the, makes chart. the charts, yeah. What is the strongest memory you have of your service well, in Korea? Well, it's in that book. It's uh, how cold it was the first mm. winter. The, it was the coldest winter on record in the fall of 50. You're talking about the, cho go, the, the Chosen the Frozen? And out in that cold is my wickedest memory of it. And you're in the water in that cold? In the water and in the rubber boats both. The spray, and if you're doing boat work, if there's any wind at all, the spray coming is freezing on our foul weather gear. So, what kind of suit did you have so that you're we not had freezing the rubber dash? suit when it was in that cold water. Yeah. We had two kinds. We had the first one. It, everything we had was left from World War II. We didn't have any new stuff. But the first one, you it had a shroud in the back. You climbed in it through, and it had a big sea clamp that they rolled that shroud up and clamped it. And then they come out with some new ones they had made for World War II, but they'd been on storage and they brought them the zipper. And nearly all of them would leak a little bit somewhere. You don't have any trouble telling. 
where it's coming in at. But I'm guessing that even if it's even if the suit's working well, it's still got to be very cold. Well, it's pretty cold. Yeah. yeah. We wore uh, long wool socks and long wool underwear underneath there. Were you armed? Did you have any yeah. weapon at all? Yeah, when we were swimming, we had a belt knife. A knife. And when we was in the rubber boats, we had a belt knife. And uh, after we got those men killed, we started putting out security that would go back inland just enough so they could watch and give a warning oh, if I there see. was any danger. Yeah. But we carried a little M1 carbine there. So are, they, are these Marines or um, you put in Marines and they, they would go on the beach and they would keep an eye out while you guys were doing your no, reconnaissance? No, I was on security more than I was not on it because I was young and fast afoot and a good shot. Wow. And me and my little buddy was on security more than we're not on it. So you were one of these guys who went inland with yeah, the weapon. Yeah, no, ordinarily we restricted. Don't go any further inland than the high water mark. But we, we couldn't get them an early enough warning to get out of rifle range and stuff. Wow. And, and we, we weren't to try to hold people off of us, just make enough noise and then get herself out so that the people in the water or in the boats would know they got to get out of there. Did you ever have a, a, um, an instance where something happened and you said, we've got to go? Well, I, we had one, <clears throat> and uh, it turned out to be, be nothing to be alarmed about. Okay. But you don't take any chances if you think, if you're suspicious of something, you go ahead. How many missions would you say you did, just oh, guessing? I, I, I know you don't have a specific we number. We didn't count but... the missions, there were operations. Uh -huh. And a lot of times, we'd be in and out of the water all day. So this is, is, this is the origin of the Navy SEALs, huh? Yeah, <clears throat> there were no Navy SEALs then. Right. They, uh, when Kennedy was president, he went to a demonstration. We put on... Uh, demonstrations for the public once in a while and Kennedy went one of them and he seen what they could do so he upped their budget and uh, started farming the SEAL teams. Wow. So how long did you serve in the Navy altogether? Three years and two months about. Just, just uh, three years? They barely got me home and if I was over there when the war ended in uh, <coughs> August and when it was over, they started sending people back home, and uh, out of this, the ship got me back to San Diego about two days mm. before I'd be discharged and go home. How often do you, even all these decades later, how often does your mind go back to your service in Korea? How often? Uh, too often. Every day? <laughs> no, not every day. But a good amount, though. <clears throat> no. Yeah. You remember the guys you served with? Yes, sir. So you went up in you you were up in helicopters, and yeah. then you were looking for mines. Yeah. Along the we beach. We went one very high, we low. Yeah. And going long, slow, and easy. Now you were inside the helicopter, or you were in this? We were outside on the pontoons. Okay, a pontoon that's hanging down from the helicopter. Well, or? it's uh, instead of having landing gear. They got a rubber pontoon about this big around and probably eight, ten feet long, enough to float a helicopter anyway. Yeah. And we was on top of those pontoons in a man basket. Wow. I, were you strapped in, I'm assuming? Mm -hmm. Did you have a, a strap? Were you strapped in so we you had, didn't fall out? We was out? able to strap in, yeah. Sometimes when they were leaving the port facility, we'd, we'd blow what's left up because the North Kids are going to have it, and we'd tear that up. We blew up, uh, Team 3 blew up uh, Hung Nam, big, big port. They evacuated a bunch of people, and they put, uh, I think it was 40 tons of explosives, and we didn't have that much, but they used the, the 
we had run the north out of there not too long before that. Yeah. And they left a bunch of bombs and mines and artillery around. And the teams used them, armed them up, and got fixed detonators for them, and used wow. them to blow up that whole port. Did you ever work with South Korean Special Forces? Uh, not a whole lot, no. The, we saw we saw them once in a while, but no. Okay. We did a little work with the First Marine Division, Recon Company, and uh, they had a South Korean or two with them. Okay, but mostly just with American but forces. As far as just us with the South Koreans, no. They didn't have the horsepower we had. They hadn't been trained like we had, and we didn't we didn't need them long on our stuff. Did you work with any other Allied forces, with the British uh, or the Australians? British Royal Marines, a, a tiny bit. But, but mostly it was just Americans. Americans, uh, but there was all kinds. The, the, the North Koreans feared the Turks. Right. Uh, this is what the, the soldiers and Marines I talked to told me. But when the Turks is in the lines, they start moving out. <laughs> yeah, I've heard, the, I've heard the Turks were pretty tough. Yeah, they would... Uh, they would mess up the carcasses of people they'd killed. That's what I heard, yeah. 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 And you remember the guys who didn't he, make it home? He was he was killed there right at the water's edge. And they wasn't able to get to him without getting herself killed. And they had to get out of there. And we wanted to we got back to ship, we wanted to go back over there and get him. But they wouldn't let us. This was your commander? Yeah. We have went and got it. You did? We would have. Oh, you would have? Yes, sir. Do you remember his name? Yes, Lieutenant Fry. Lieutenant Fry, the best officer. He went all through World War II. And he was in the teams, all them Pacific Island invasions, never got a scratch. And we hadn't been over there in no time at all. He'd been killed in action. Not much of the, he had a pistol and there's another officer with him had a pistol. That's all the armament we had over there. We got to, we got a gun tub on each side of our boats. But when we're down there in friendly territory. That's strange that he was killed in South Korea. Yeah. By villagers I in think, South uh, Korea. I, I think the name of the place was Teju, but I'm not sure about that. We started having our own reunions. The, the SEALs have a big reunion on both coasts once a year. Mm -hmm. And we went to one. We didn't know about them until 95. And uh, we went to it. And <clears throat> we don't know anybody except the guys we served with. So we decided to just have our own reunion. Then we'd know everybody there. Mm. And we'd have them, uh, we had one from after 1995, we had uh, one just about every year. Wow. But we, the, we all got so old, we had the last one about four years ago. And it was just uh, six or seven there mm. that's able to travel. And right. So we decided that that was all. That's it. Sometimes the Korean War is called the Forgotten War. World War II gets a lot of attention, Vietnam gets a lot of attention, Korea yeah. gets stuck in the middle there. Do you, do you feel that that's true, that Korea is kind of the Forgotten War? <coughs> Not for the ones that was over there. No. Mm. But it, it wasn't really a war, it was a police action. That's United Nations police yeah. action. Yeah. Not too many Americans have been in North Korea, but you set foot in North Korea a bunch of times, huh? Yeah. We, <clears throat> they are the, we did a lot of diversions where they'd move, troop, move the enemy troops around. And we, we did one or two where they made a, a small, not publicized landing with a few Marines. And we did a little bit of work with... Uh, civilians 
that uh, they would bring to us and uh, they'd get on the ship and we would land them at a certain spot at night. Land some Marines at a certain spot? Uh, well, they, they weren't Marines. Oh, okay. they, at least they weren't in uniform. <clears throat> and they didn't tell us who they were or what they're going to do, and they told us not to ask them. <laughs> so Just take them in there and put them off. And then wow. when the time comes, we'll go in there and get them, bring wow. them back out. So maybe they were OSS guys. Well, they were armed, and some they was gone sometimes several days. Uh, we always thought it was CIA. Yeah. Secret Service. Yeah, something like that. And uh, a time or two, they brought back Asian prisoners. They did. Yeah. And we we never did. Uh, we never were told. Cause they they get on that ship, and as soon as we could, they put them on on shore somewhere on another bigger ship. So you would drop these guys off, probably OSS, you know, sort of the forerunner to the CIA. Generally, we'd take them in rubber boats, yeah. and they're just the same way as we're doing a recon. They just the power boat would stop, and then we'd get the people in the rubber boats. So you drop them in. off. They go inland. They capture somebody, probably to get information from that person. Well, yeah, they and were, then they bring that person back to the ship. And, gathering, gathering information, and recon you're, work. And you're told not to ask any questions. And yeah. Were you also told at the time not to talk about this at home? In what? Were you also told not to write about any any of this in letters? There's and, some of the things that we all. Uh, I knew I had to be cleared for classified, and I think everybody was. Yeah, yeah. And uh, certain things, anything you don't write about, right. you don't tell anybody about. Yeah, wow. And I've been told that that's all released now, but we were, some of that stuff we were told uh, there's, a, there's not going to be a written record of this. I wouldn't even tell you this, what it was. Yeah. And they said it'll never be public information. Wow. What is your best memory of your service in the Korean War? Well, I, I don't know, just the friendship we had with the people there. And my worst, one of my worst memories is we went into a, a couple of little villages that had just been relieved from the North Koreans. And it was all shot up, and there was little kids half naked, and that's my worst memories. Just seeing the damage, the destruction of war? Yeah, and the trouble it caused the people there, especially the children. Mm. And you can still see them in your mind? You can still see those kids in well, your mind? Not so much anymore, no. Yeah. Wow.